It is possible for compact disc players to go faulty. And let's consider this player. We insert the magazine, press the play button, and disc number one is accepted and clamped onto the spindle platform. After a brief moment in time, the disc is ejected. The player will now check each tray of the magazine in turn and because there is a full problem with this player each disc is rejected. Having checked the complete magazine the optical assembly will revert back to the disc one position And now it is for the engineer to endeavour to resolve whatever the fault may be on this player. With Pioneer players, there is the facility of the test mode option. With the Pioneer players, it is possible to put the player into the test mode. The purpose of the test mode will enable engineers to use the front control buttons to operate various aspects of the CD player. To put the compact disc player into the test mode, we have the test mode button on the main printed circuit board. By pressing the test mode button down and then switching the player on, and holding the test mode button down, counting 2-3. The player is now in the test mode. And now various buttons on the front of the panel can now be operated in order to operate certain functions of the player. Manual search forward and manual search reverse will cause the optical assembly to move from one end of the disc to the other. The operating track search forward will cause disc number one to be accepted from the magazine and cause the laser and the focus to operate. The play button will enable the disc to start rotating and the pause button will enable the disc to start playing after operating track search forward, play, followed by pause. The stop button will remove all the operations that have been set up but still leave the player in the test mode. With the disc inserted on number one tray of the magazine, insert the magazine into the player. Press track forward, the disc will be accepted from the magazine and clamped onto the disc turntable. Pressing the play button will now cause the disc to rotate at an acceptable speed. And pressing the pause button will now cause the player to come fully into the play mode and provide an output display on the front panel as well as audio from the audio output from the player. Pressing the stop button will remove all those functions, restore the disc back into the magazine. The player will remain in the test mode until switched off. The oscilloscope is an extremely important piece of equipment to use when servicing compact disc players. 
Before using the oscilloscope, it is essential to check that the oscilloscope is set correctly and fitted with a times 10 probe. Ground the input to the oscilloscope and ensure that the trace is central on the screen. The Y amplifier control should be set to about 10 millivolts per centimetre. Restore the input switch back to the DC position and now we can proceed with the first of the adjustments which is the focus offset adjustment. The purpose of this adjustment is to remove unnecessary DC potentials within the focus servo. Connect the oscilloscope probe to the focus offset connection, which is natural fact the focus error connection, and adjust the focus offset control to neutralize or zeroize any unrequired DCs at that position. The next adjustment is the tracking offset adjustment to achieve exactly the same results. Connect the probe to the tracking error or offset position and adjust the tracking offset control to neutralize again any unrequired DC potentials within the tracking server. This completes the first two essential basic adjustments of focus offset and tracking offset. The next adjustment is the RF offset. Connect the scope probe to the RF offset position and adjust the RF offset control to provide a potential of 100 millivolts. With the scope set to 10 millivolts and using a times 10 probe, then the deflection on the scope should be one centimeter to equal 100 millivolts of setting at this position. This adjustment is extremely important as it is possible for CD players not to operate correctly if this adjustment is extensively out of alignment. The next adjustment is to confirm that the laser power is at the correct level. This can be done with a laser power meter, but with the multi-disc players this can prove difficult so there is an alternative method which can be used not only with the multi-disc players but also on the single disc players. The oscilloscope is connected to the RF output on the printed circuit board. As the laser power control is on the flexi print, you require the back support to protect the print from damage. A 2.5 millimeter blade width screwdriver is necessary and locating the screwdriver into the slot can prove at times difficult. Having located the screwdriver we now adjust this control, laser power control, to achieve the correct value of the waveform on the oscilloscope. Having achieved that, the laser power is considered to be correct. We adjust the scope to 50 millivolts per centimetre and the time base we set to 0.5 microseconds. The disc has been inserted, the player is in the test mode we press track forward, the disc has been accepted. The movement that appears on the scope 
indicates that the disc has the laser on and has been focused. Pressing play, the disc will now rotate. With the Y position, bring the Y trace down to an acceptable area on the scope face. It may be necessary to press manual search forward to bring back into view a more acceptable eye pattern. We do not press pause at this stage. This is the crude eye pattern and we adjust this level to give one and a half volts peak to peak. At this moment in time, this laser power is slightly high. We will reduce the laser power until we have a waveform that is in the region of one and a half volts peak to peak. When doing this adjustment, ensure that a recommended test disc is always used. Cheaper types of test discs or even cheaper types of discs can give poor reflectivity and provide an incorrect reading with respect to the level of the laser power. If cheap discs are used for this adjustment, there can be problems when good quality discs are used as the reflectivity is better and if a higher laser has been set, this can upset tracking and focus servers within the plan. So the recommended test disc, the STD901, is the one preferred for this adjustment. The next adjustment, having determined that the laser power is at the correct level, is the tracking balance adjustment. The oscilloscope probe is changed to the tracking error point on the test point setting and the adjustment to be adjusted is the tracking balance control. Adjusting this control to ensure that we achieve the waveform on the oscilloscope to be balanced either side of zero. On the oscilloscope, ensure that the trace is centered once more. Restore the input switch back to DC. The time base needs to be brought down to around 2 milliseconds per centimeter. And the Y amplifier to about 0.1. Pressing track forward once more, followed by play, we now get the characteristic tracking error waveform. Adjustment of the time base to either increase or decrease the speed may be necessary, but the aim here is to ensure that by adjusting the tracking balance control, this waveform is centered either side of the zero line. The fact that if one adjusts in one direction, the waveform increases, whilst going in another wave direction, the waveform decreases, should be ignored. The important factor is achieving that waveform either side of the center line. The tracking balance is now The final check in this sequence is to confirm that the RF level is correct. The probe is moved to the RF alpha pin. And we now monitor the oscilloscope for the eye pattern to be the correct amplitude.
This is achieved by pressing track forward, play, and followed by pause. The amplitude of this waveform should be one and a half volts peak to peak. If the waveform is not correct in amplitude, final adjustment of the laser power is necessary to bring the level into specification of one and a half volts peak to peak. The voltage control oscillator adjustment is carried out using a frequency counter. The probe is connected to the relevant test point for the player for checking the voltage control oscillator frequency and the voltage controlled oscillator adjustment is the blue preset. This is adjusted to give on this player a frequency in the region of 4.375, possibly slightly higher. That sort of range, as indicated on the frequency counter, should be quite acceptable. The player is in the test mode, and pressing track forward, followed by play, followed by pause to enable the player to operate, the frequency should lock at about 4.321 megahertz. Most of the adjustments have now been covered on the player, with the exception of the focus and tracking gain control. If the player has been incorrectly adjusted in the first instance, though there is a procedure to adjust these controls correctly, an initial setting is useful to ensure that each of the tracking and focus gain controls are just put into a temporary position of just forward of halfway in their full rotation. These two controls are now in an initial stage of adjustment and the player should now be able to operate if there is no major problem with the player at all. Having gone through the basic adjustment procedure, it is now useful to check that the player is operating. We switch the player on, insert the magazine, Press play. Now the disc has been accepted, it will run up, and we now get a readout coming on the front panel display and music also. The player now, on completion of the adjustments, has been restored back into an operational condition. When removing or replacing the optical unit, it is worth adopting certain procedures. The player is on and in the test mode, and by pressing manual search forward, move the optical assembly towards the outer playing area of the compact disc. This will be useful later on. Switch the player off, to remove the complete optical assembly, certain screws have to be removed. Also, an earth screw on the chassis. Remove the multicoloured lead which supplies the spindle motor and the carriage motor. But before removing the flexi print, it is necessary to short the two lands on the flexi print together to protect the laser and any subsequent damage from possible static. A paper clip is ideal for this process and now the flexi print can be gently removed from the connector.
Having removed the screws, the complete unit can now be lifted clear. Before removing the optical assembly from the player, the optical unit was moved towards the outer edge of the playing area of a compact disc. The reason for this was to make more accessible a spring that provides an amount of back tension on the optical assembly when it is fitted. And this spring must be released first before removing the optical assembly from the unit. By just unhooking the spring from its latch and ensuring the spring is turned towards the carriage motor, that spring can now be left there and virtually forgotten. To remove the optical assembly a series of screws must be removed. One, two, three, four, and one hidden just down here. This one only has to be released. Releasing that screw, sufficient like that. Now remove the other screw. Turn the unit round, hold the metal plate in position and ensure that the flexi print is released from any of the wires that are underneath the optical assembly. Lift up the metal plate and the spindle motor will also come up. Ease out that wire there. Lift up the metal plate and ease the assembly like that over to the back of this unit. Now lift up the optical block together with the slide bar and let the flexi print feed through the hole. This is the spring that it was unhooked and now that unit can be left to one side. The slide bar can be removed and placed there. Before inserting the new optical assembly, new optical assembly, will have the flexi print protection there, the solder, to protect the laser. There is an initial adjustment that is worth carrying out before inserting the new block into the assembly. And that initial adjustment is the tangential adjustment. And that is a small piece of plastic there that is adjusted by an Allen key through from that point to that. It is extremely useful to preset the height of that plastic to the original height of the old or optical block that is being replaced. This will prevent unnecessary adjustment when the unit is fitted back into the player. So by turning the Allen key in the direction that raises or lowers this plastic so that it is in the same height of the original optical assembly, this adjustment will be made that much easier. 
The new optical block is now ready to be fitted back into the complete optical assembly. The slider bar needs to be fitted into the relevant holes on the optical block. The flexi print is now fed into the hole in the base of the unit and a hole in the base of the optical assembly or the optical block has to be located over a small lug on the white base on this platform. The spring should still be in that position and locating the hole over the lug is now necessary and the slider bar located in at either end of the housing. Once the optical assembly has been placed over that lug and ensuring that the slider bar is correctly placed, there should now be a small amount of movement on the new optical block. It is now necessary to hold that optical block in position, take the metal plate, feed the wires through and reposition the spindle motor into the housing. Occasionally the wires may need to be pushed underneath correctly. Position the metal plate over all the holes and now we can put the screws back into the relevant hole. At this stage do not over tighten any of the screws. Ground wire or earth wire needs to be positioned correctly and the relevant screw fitted. The fourth screw on the top of the unit now fitted. Magnetism taking charge. Taking the screw. Screw positioned by the carriage motor needs to be just gently tightened and before final tightening of all the screws ensure that amount of freedom is still available on the optical assembly. Having achieved that the screws can now be fully tightened The optical assembly has now been installed. The final point is the spring. The spring is just pulled back, relocated over the lug and now there should be an amount of back tension on the optical assembly and providing that has been achieved the optical assembly is now fitted correctly. It's now just necessary to ensure that the flexi print is fed back through the wires to be correctly located when the optical assembly is reinstalled into the unit. Refitting the complete optical assembly now back into the player, the procedure is as follows. Place the optical assembly 
over the fixing hole, the flexi print, and the wires in that manner there. The screws fitted into each of the rubber mounts. And each screw then tightened up. Final screw for the earth lead fitted. The multicoloured wire is plugged back into position. And the flexi print is now connected. The Solder blob for the protection of the laser diode needs to be removed as the last procedure and just easing that solder away to the soldering iron. The player is now ready to be switched on in the test mode and the procedures that have to be followed are now that the offset should be checked. The laser power should be checked and then the grating will now need to be adjusted. When an optical assembly has been replaced, it is essential that the correct adjustment of the grating is carried out. The scope probe is moved to the tracking error position and the optical assembly itself is moved by use of the manual search forward and reverse button to ensure that the aperture for adjusting the grating is in the correct position. The press track forward to accept a disc and then press play. To do the grating adjustment it is essential that a 2.5 millimeter screwdriver is used. That is inserted into the grating aperture and located correctly. Having located the grating the screwdriver is now turned fully anti-clockwise. It is essential that a 2.5 millimeter screwdriver is be used for this adjustment. The screwdriver is located into the grating aperture, we press track forward, we press play. We're now monitoring the tracking error output. We turn the grating adjustment until the screwdriver is fully anti-clockwise. We're going to monitor the number of maximum of the tracking error waveform. If when the screwdriver is fully anti-clockwise, a maximum is achieved, that must be counted as the first maximum. We now turn the screwdriver clockwise, counting each successive maximum. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine. 
So now turn the screwdriver back for the anti-clockwise again. We will now go to the centermost maximum. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Having adjusted the absolute maximum at this point, press the pause button to determine whether any audio output is achieved or a readout on the front panel display. If that is achieved, then we have the correct adjustment point. Whilst on this player there were nine maximums, not all those maximums will work. Only the alternative maximum will work and the centermost maximum is the one that is desired that will operate. After the grating adjustment has been completed, it is now necessary to complete the tangential adjustment. This was initially set before fitting the new optical assembly. We monitor the RF output to obtain an eye pattern from the player. The player is in the test mode and we now move the optical assembly until the tangential adjustment can actually be seen on the optical assembly in this vicinity here. The tangential adjustment being that point there. The preferred tool to do this adjustment is an Allen ball adjustment, 1.5 millimetres. The reason this is used now is that across this green, green printed circuit area there's mains potential. The player, as mentioned before, is in the test mode. We press track forward to accept the disc. We press play, followed by pull. Now we insert the driver into the adjustment and now adjust the driver to improve the eye pattern for its optimum value. We adjust the tangential adjustment to obtain an eye pattern that is as clean as possible or effectively the appearance is nicely in focus. Going through the correct setting, we're in between tracks there, let the eye pattern settle. Going through the setting, we will go out of focus again and just come back until the eye pattern is as tidy as possible. That completes the tangential adjustment. The focus gain adjustment needs to be set reasonably accurately and the simplified method of doing this is to connect the oscilloscope to the focus error point and the focus gain control will be adjusted. The player can be set either in the ordinary play mode or in the test mode, having pressed track forward, play and pause in order to do the focus gain adjustment. With the oscilloscope, ensure the input is ground and adjust the input to around 20 millivolts. Remember that a times 10 probe is also being used. 
put the input switch to DC and just adjust the focus gain control until the trace is just above the zero line. The time base for this adjustment is set to about 0.1 milliseconds. That position and that adjustment for the focus gain will indicate that the focus gain control is near to the midpoint position. The Focus gain control does not have to be absolutely precise in its setting as there is an amount of latitude for the operation of the focus server. After carrying out the focus gain adjustment, the tracking gain adjustment must be carried out and the scope is now connected to the tracking error position and the tracking gain control is going to be adjusted. With the tracking gain control the input to the oscilloscope needs to be inc increased to approximately 0.1 of a millivolt the tracking gain control is a little bit more critical though it will still be near to the mid position. If the tracking gain control is turned at clockwise too far then noise, increased noise in fact as well as a frequency will appear on the tracking loop. Turning the gain control too far anti-clockwise will cause the tracking error waveform to start hunting up and down. Just ease forward from there until the trace has settled and the preset is around the midpoint position. Again, there is quite an amount of latitude in the operation of the tracking servo. So the tracking gain control does not have to be absolutely precise. Virtually all the adjustments have now been completed on the multi-CD player, but it has been observed that the focus offset can be slightly fine-tuned or finely adjusted with respect to the multiplayer. The scope is connected once more to the focus error point and the focus offset control is going to be slightly adjusted. The player is in the test mode, the disc has been selected, play has been pressed, followed by pause and the player is now working. But when the player was initially stopped before selecting the test mode, it can be observed that the focus offset is correctly adjusted to zero. Pressing track forward again, followed by play, followed by pause. The setting of the focus error waveform is in the position for doing the focus gain control. Therefore the trace is set as for the focus gain control. But with the, with the optical assemblies used in the multiple CD player, there is a slight DC current flowing through the coil to raise the lens up into a neutral position. This needs to be finely adjusted and by slight adjustment of the focus offset control the noise on the focus servo 
circuit can be minimized. When that has been minimized, the focus servo is now operating correctly. It must be emphasized that this adjustment is only applicable to multiple CD players where the optical unit is operating effectively upside down. The new range of Pioneer players, such as the PD4500, have a new optical assembly and also there are less controls to adjust. To set the test mode on the new range of players, there are two links that need to be shorted together temporarily and then switch on the player. The player is now in the test mode. With the PD4500 series of players, there are less adjustments to adjust tracking balance, focus offset, tracking gain, focus gain. Opening the drawer, the optical assembly can be seen here and as the player is in the test mode, the optical assembly can be moved out. On this optical assembly, there is not only a tangential adjustment, but also a radial adjustment. Each are accessible from the top using a 1.5 millimeter hexagonal ball driver. The grating adjustment can be adjusted using a 2.5 millimeter screwdriver and the location on the single disc players is down through there and is relatively easy to achieve. If a 12 centimeter disc is used, closing the drawer, the optical assembly is moved towards the outer edge of the 12 centimetre disc and the grating can be achieved through at that point there. It is possible to use a 8 centimetre disc instead of the 12 centimetre disc. The optical assembly is brought forward and providing the 8 centimetre disc has at least 12 minutes playing time then again the grating can be accessed quite easily down the side of the disc. Seen side by side here are the two types of optical assemblies that are used in Pioneer players. This optical assembly here is the older type and is now being replaced by the newer assembly. They are not interchangeable. This optical unit fitted in this assembly is the new PEA1030 type. There is an extra mechanical adjustment on this assembly. There is a radial adjustment as well as a tangential adjustment and these are the two adjustments here. With the single disc player a 1.5 millimeter hexagonal ball wrench can be fitted in and the adjustment done easily from the top. On a multiple player, 
the optical assembly would be upside down and a Phillips screwdriver would be you instead a small Phillips screwdriver is you to do those two adjustments turning the unit back over on the flexi print the laser power adjustment and the protective area that has to be desoldered when a new unit is fitted to protect the laser the grating adjustment on the new optical assembly is carried out using a 2.5 millimeter screwdriver and access is relatively easy to obtain through that point there the adjustment is the same as on the multiplayers previously mentioned however it can be easily preliminary set by ensuring that when the screwdriver is fitted that the two slots one on the plastic and one on that phosphor bond strip are in alignment and virtually that can be considered as being the midpoint when doing the grating from this point then the one maximum nearest that point that works is acceptable in the multi disc player where this unit is effectively upside down the grating is accessed through that hole there and again location of the screwdriver into the grating slot is quite easy replacement of an optical unit in this assembly again also is quite straightforward first of all ease out the flexi print from that location there gently removing it and it will unhook from an oval latch there turning the optical assembly over there is a plastic lock at this point here that is moved across the slide bar is now pushed through and eased away and taken right through away from the optical assembly hold the optical assembly while this operation takes place there is a locking spring at that point just there that spring is just disengaged it will not fall off and the new optical or the old optical assembly is now eased away the grating adjustment on the new optical block can be seen here quite clearly a phosphor bond strip with a slot and a plastic slot there the screwdriver will engage into those two points quite easily the position of the phosphor bronze strip is centralized with respect to that slot and this is the center point to start the grating adjustment when fitting the new optical assembly into the complete assembly there is a lug at this point here which has to engage under that metal surface there and also on the new optical assembly there is a slot at that point there which has to locate over that lug at that point there the spring here locks the optical assembly into position ease the spring back and hold it back take the new optical assembly feed the flexi print through the slot and ease the unit down like that 
engage the slot underneath the base, engage the white slot into the plastic. The spring, in actual fact, will come back at this stage. Ease the slider bar into the first of the holes, down through the second hole, and push the slider bar down, rotating into the bottom hole here. Complete pushing the slot, the, the slider down, until the plastic lock comes back over to prevent the slider inadvertently coming out. The optical assembly is now ready to be reinserted for adjustment. If at any stage the spindle motor has to be replaced, the platform here, the disc turntable, has to be removed. Replacing the turntable again has to be at the right height and to one side of the complete assembly is the plastic distance piece which is removed placed underneath the disc turntable. The disc turntable is pressed down to acquire the right height. Maintenance procedures with the new optical assembly are much more simplified.